Well hi guys, I just purchased this automatic watch from eBay, it cost me about £12, it was for sale um, saying it needed a service, working but needed a service and as soon as I got it, it wasn't working for more than a few seconds of time. I've managed to improve that by just dabbing a bit of oil on top of the jewels and giving the watch a bit of a heat up in a heated throw. Seems we've got a little bit of oil where it needs to be, um, but it does sometimes stop and a little shake it, get it going again, but it's certainly working a lot better than it was. Now it's a, a Dryden 25 jewels. So I can zoom in here. We've got terrible light today. Super automatic Inca block, Swiss made. We have a date, but you have to go all the way around the clock to change the date, hence why it's saying the 26th. And I think it's the 6th of January today. Horrible, cloudy, rainy, north wind, cold day here in the UK. Let's zoom that back out. Now what I can find out about the Dryden company is that they are a independent little micro um, watch company based in America where well, they are now and they do some very nice looking kind of submariners and um, kind of dive type watches that type of thing but I think they might have acquired this name along the way I don't think they were um, Dryden all the way back in the 1960s which produced this watch. I can't find anything out about them, um, the early ones. So I'm taking a guess, perhaps this company acquired this name and set up a little micro brand. Because I think this is a Swiss watch company, maybe with British links, looking at the name. And it's a nice looking watch. It came with this Fixoflex expandable strap and the watch was really grubby when I got it. I spent quite a bit of time, took the strap off with some warm washing up liquid basically. And water, I've got the strap looking nice and clean. Get all the dirt out in between the links. And I've given the case a bit of a clean and polish up and also the um, crystal. Although that was in quite good shape, there's not too many scratches on there, but the dial has got plenty of kind of staining patina on it. But it still looks pretty good and I'm glad it's working. Well, I mean, it's kind of working. It does occasionally stop. It might stop whilst I'm uh, videoing this because I've only just really got it going this morning. So we're seeing how it goes, but it's better than it was. So I'll take the back off and just give you a look at the uh, movement there. Okay, so here we have the movement. Try to focus. 25 joules, Swiss made. A very nice looking copper color at least, probably is using copper, I'm not quite sure. Automatic movement. So it looks reasonably good quality. And it seems to be ticking away quite nicely at the moment. Although someone will probably tell me there's no power going to the balance wheel. I'm not an expert at all and it's definitely a bit touch or go at the moment, this watch. I mean, it really is a beautiful thing. As I say, the way I got it working more reliably is by potting a drop of um, this oil I've got. is sword oil. It's quite a thin oil. It's used for maintaining. I had a couple of medieval um, display swords 
but they are carbon steel and they need um, looking after. You have to kind of uh, apply oil to them. So I, I bought this oil a while back and it's, um, I haven't got the, well, I've got the swords, I put them away. I don't display them anymore, but they're coated in oil and I've got plenty of this oil left. And it's also used for cleaning as well, but it's quite a fine oil. So with a little drop of that onto that jewel on top of the balance wheel, I then uh, put the back back on and I've got a heated throw, which I've put up to a higher temperature, put it inside the heated throw for 10 minutes to get that oil even thinner with the hope that it might get a little bit where it needs to be and in this case it has done the job it doesn't always work but in this case it's done the job but of course this needs a professional clean a professional service or at least someone who knows what they're doing who's got the equipment which I haven't it's something I'd quite like to be able to do but I haven't got the equipment I haven't particularly got the eyesight either um, and you've really got to know what you're doing so I'm happy to kind of tinker around a little bit, but that's about as far as I go. So let's get the back back on. So with the back back on, it's telling us that it's Swiss made and apparently waterproof. Inca block, automatic, stainless steel back and we've got a serial number 8844. As I said, I approximate this to be 1960s. I did find an earlier advert on the internet um, where this had been sold at an auction site. So it's not the first time it's been sold. And it is the same watch. It was absolutely identical. And that had a little bit of information on it. So let's put it on a wrist. I'll show you what it looks like on my six and a half inch wrist. Okay, got a nice Fixoflex expandable bracelet which suits it quite well, I think. Oh, hang on, we're a bit zoomed in here, one second. Okay, that's better. Still working. Yeah, it's quite a handsome looking watch. The chrome's pretty much intact. It's not in too bad shape and I quite like a bit of patina on the face because it shows its age. It gives it a little, to me, it makes it a bit more interesting. I mean, it's nice to have a mint looking watch, but if it's not too damaged, it's quite nice to have something that's got a little bit of patina to it. Just trying to get in, it's, we've got such bad light here today, it's hard to see but you can see the dial is a champagne color, but there is some staining on there. So this company is still going, I think it's Kansas in America. You know, check out their watches. They do look very, very nice actually for an independent company. The price point is kind of like $500, that type of price. So we're not talking a real cheap watch brand but I don't know what relevance they have to these vintage watches I wouldn't be surprised if they've just perhaps bought the um, name yeah a rare watch I can't really find any more of these so one of the reasons I make these videos is it's just nice to show people who enjoy watches some of these obscure brands you know, it might jog someone's memory. Someone might say, oh yeah, I used to have one of those. And it's, it's lovely to see these old things. A bit like when you see an old car you used to own. Because watches are so personal to us. We wear them for a long period of time. And I'm too young to have worn something like this. I'm a child of the 70s, 80s. But I do appreciate um, the quality of these older vintage, vintage watches. I find them fascinating. And some of them are absolutely beautiful. So that one, whether it'll carry on going, I don't know. I'm not going to pay to get it serviced. It's a £12 watch. Um, 
I'll keep it. We'll see how it goes. If it does carry on working, I may wear it one evening, something like that. I like to wear a different watch when I go out. That's part of the enjoyment. I'm not going to wear it every day, but it's enjoyable to uh, take one of these watches out and wear for the evening or even a day. Um, but if it packs up, I'll probably whack it back on eBay and someone who's got the skills to service it, clean it properly, because I don't think there's much wrong with this. And they can do that themselves. So they're doing it obviously very cheaply. They're just doing it themselves. Uh, then they're going to have a nice watch an interesting watch and a very rare watch and a good size watch. It's not like some of the real small vintage ones, which do look a little bit tiny on a man's wrist nowadays. That's a good size. So yeah, pleased with that one. And the watch strap itself, I've even seen this Fixoflex stainless steel uh, expanding watch strap. Some people were asking 30 quid alone for those. So they seem to have, um, you know, a, a bit of a, kind of following themselves because they're good quality so just the strap alone is it's is got some value to it whether whether they actually get these 30 40 pounds for these straps i don't know but there's someone on there advertising these fixo flex straps vintage ones so i've got a couple of these now on watches makes me think maybe i'll take the strap off it stick a leather one on and sell the strap separately who knows but it does suit it pretty well. It's of the period. Okay, guys, I thought I'd show you this Dryden watch and um, look out for other videos where I find other obscure brands and watches to uh, tinker around with. Thanks a lot. Happy New Year. Take care.